I would like to introduce Kia Cawthon, housing provider, and outreach specialist, and Tamika Melvin, senior vice president of In Libyan's Housing Choice Voucher Program. They will discuss myths surrounding the HCVP program and highlighting enhancements that have been made to the program for our housing providers and families. Thank you, John. Sorry about that. Good morning. Thank you, John. Uh, my name is Kia Cawthon. I am a housing provider outreach specialist within Libyan. And my name is Tamika Melvin. I'm the senior vice president of the Housing Choice Voucher Program. I'd like to welcome you to the Demystifying HCV Program session. To make sure that everyone understands what HCVP stands for is Housing Choice Voucher Program. And it is a federally backed program that provides tenant-based rental assistance to the very low and low families, including the disabled, as well as elderly, find affordable, decent, and safe housing in the private market. Our families can locate their own properties, which could include uh, single family homes, apartments, as well as townhomes. And the housing provider receives a housing subsidy on behalf of the family that's paid by in Libyan <clears throat> directly. And as well, if the family pays a portion of their rent, their portion would be no more than 30 to 40% of their adjusted monthly income. Next slide, please. Okay, now, most people, okay. Most ahead, people have um, heard about the Housing Choice Voucher Program. At this time, we would like, like to take a poll of our audience to see what conceptions or things that you have currently heard about the Housing Choice Voucher Program. So at this time, we're going to have our first poll question, which will be, true or false, do you think housing choice voucher tenants are problem tenants? Uh, okay, thank you for everyone who voted in the poll. Um, our results are 91% of our attendees think that that answer is false. Okay, so our um, next poll question, and we are going to give the answers to this after we complete all of our poll questions. So the next poll question is, is it impossible, it is, it, well, True or false, it is almost impossible to evict a HCV tenant. Okay, so 10% of our attendees believe that that is a true statement, while 90% of our attendees believe that that is a false statement. So for our last poll question, it is um, true or false, landlords can't charge housing choice voucher participants the same rent as non-HCV tenants. All right, 7% of our attendees believe that that answer is true, while 93% of our attendees believe that is false. So now let's get to the answers. 
So, so for the clear. question, first question, um, are HCV tenants problem tenants? And the answer is false. So that's very good. It seems the majority of persons got the answer correct. And basically, uh, our uh, participants typically uh, are long-term tenants. Uh, the average time frame that our tenants tend to live in a property is about seven to eight years. Uh, there's also no document uh, statistics that show that our families um, can da damage properties compared to non-HCV uh, participants. So it's important to our uh, housing providers to make sure that you screen your applicants for suitability and, and make sure that they meet the eligible requirements to rent from you. Okay. The um, second statement was also false. Um, housing choice voucher tenants are bound by the terms of their rental agreements and are subject to eviction, just like any other tenant. Um, housing providers should treat their HCV tenants just like any other market tenant. If someone is late on their rent, they should receive a late notice, as well as a lease violation if they um, violate any terms of their rental agreement. Um, just like any other market rate tenants, in order for a landlord to start the eviction process, they would have to file court papers to obtain possession of the unit and obtain a judgment for any damages. However, our Housing Choice Voucher um, Program participants, they are incentivized to follow the terms of their lease. Um, violating their lease is also a program violation, which could risk them um, of losing their housing choice voucher assistance. As far as the answer for the third question, the true answer or the correct answer is false. A landlord can charge the full rent no matter who the tenant is. Our agency conduct rent reasonables to ensure that our housing providers are not requesting a higher rent uh, than comparable units in the assistant units neighborhood. And as well, uh, unit qualifications vary by the family's composition and dynamic as, as well as income. Okay, so for our next slide, um, we all know with the coronavirus pandemic, um, there has been challenges across the globe in responding to um, the needs of residents, families, employees, and it has also impacted our rental markets. Um, in response to COVID-19, Olivian has made rapid adjustments to our operations to help meet our families' needs while working remotely. Some of the things that we have implemented due to COVID-19 um, to ensure the safety of our staff and our families have been virtual briefings for new admissions and transfers, encryption software that allows our families to submit their personal identifying information securely and safely, as well as um, the ability to allow staff to obtain electronic signatures. The Olivian Housing Authority is also in the process of researching kiosks that would allow families to self-service themselves and provide documentation to the Housing Choice Voucher Program so that we can process any income changes in a timely fashion that would allow our housing providers to continue to receive their full portion of um, contract rent. Additionally, um, other things that we have implemented in response to COVID-19 um, have been a lot of inspections related initiatives. Um, HUD has implemented several COVID-19 waivers that the authority has implemented, such as delayed biennial inspections. Um, we currently have up to 12 months to conduct biennial inspections from the date that it was originally due. Additionally, we are allowing self-certification of repairs for any special inspections. Special inspections include those inspections uh, where a family or a community member may have made a complaint about the condition of their unit. We have also extended the abatement periods 
um, because we know at this time it may be difficult for a landlord to contract the vendor to make the repairs to the unit, um, or the family may be hesitant to allow someone in their unit due to the um, COVID-19. Um, although we are expanding the abatement periods for our housing providers, um, depending on the situation of the deficiency in the unit, the family still may be allowed to transfer. At this time, we have also suspended um, our QC inspections, as well as we are in the process of researching virtual inspection processes. Additional things that Olivian has implemented to adapt our operations to prioritize our st staff and residents um, have been implementing several MTW initiatives and COVID related waivers related to voucher extensions. Um, families who currently have vouchers on the street, their vouchers have been extended to December 31st in response to COVID-19. We have also received approval from HUD to implement triennial recertifications for our entire portfolio. What that means is our families are now recertified every three years, and we now have applied that initiative to our work body families, work able families, as well as our elderly disabled. At this time, we are also accepting alternate income verification methods. What that means is, um, say we have a family, they have received a loss in income or decreased income due to COVID-19, where usually we would require a third party verification, such as um, a letter from the employer or something in writing from the employer. We are now allowing families to self-certify that decrease in income so that we can make the adjustments to ensure that our housing providers are receiving all of their contract rent as well as the family's rental portion is decreased so that they can maintain housing during this pandemic. And Livian is not just a housing authority. And Livian is one of 39 agencies that is a participant in the moving to work demonstration. Our MTW status allows us the flexibility to design and test innovative strategies that meet our local housing needs. MTW also allows Olivian the ability to request certain exemptions from housing choice voucher regulations um, with HUD approval. Many MTW agencies have developed innovative policies that have been proven successful. Um, since a lot of these strategies have been proven successful, they have been replicated nationwide to all public housing agencies. Um, some of the initiatives that Enlivian specifically has implemented have been biennial inspections um, under general um, HQS guidelines, um, units are typically inspected every year under using MTW authority and Livian inspects our units every other year or biennially. We also allow self-certification um, for deficiencies of the unit. That would mean that a housing provider, instead of having a inspector come out to re-inspect your unit, you would be able to take pictures that you have corrected the deficiency or send in any related work orders or um, contract costs to verify that the work has been completed. We also allow um, owners to utilize a certificate of occupancy from Mecklenburg County for new construction and rehabilitation units. Using our MTW authority, Olivian has also implemented a housing provider incentive program. Last but not least, um, one of the main uh, major initiatives that we have implemented with our MTW authority is a work requirement. Um, under our work requirement, families that are work abled, so those families that are non disabled, non elderly, non disabled, are required to meet a minimum number of hours of employment. Along with this work requirement, we have paired it with supportive services to ensure that our families are successful. Thanks, Tamika. One of the major programs that we have been able to implement using the MTW authority that Tamika just discussed is the Opportunity Housing Program. 
this program was uh, <clears throat> this program was based on a uh, mobility study that was done on the top 50 uh, cities in the country where it showed that Charlotte ranked 50 out of 50, meaning last as far as upward mobility. What that basically means is if a child is born into poverty, the likelihood the child will remain or the, the child will remain in poverty upon reaching an adult age. So in Libyan uh, identified these high opportunity areas. And with this, the study showed that if you can reach a child at a young age, remove them from the poverty situation and place them into one of these opportunity areas, the likelihood is that they will develop and grow and ultimately become a contributor to society and also ward off systemic poverty. So with that, uh, the opportunity housing neighborhoods have been identified as lower crime rates, also uh, better educational opportunities for children, access to transportation, as well as employment options for the families. So persons or families that are issued the opportunity housing voucher with young children allows them to gain access to high quality neighborhoods as well as have a higher payment standard, which is between 140 to 150% of fair market rent. The family does have to meet certain criteria to be eligible for this voucher, uh, this opportunity housing voucher. Uh, number one, there must be an employment of at least one to two years with a minimum gap of 30 days. The family must earn at least $18,500 and continue to receive supportive services prior to the issuance. And also they will receive, trans, uh, excuse me, supportive services uh, during the transitional period. The family also have to complete four service modules prior to receiving uh, the voucher, which includes financial literacy, as well as maintenance, inspections, and conflict resolution. In addition to um, the MTW initiatives, uh, housing low income families is a priority to us. So our agency has implemented an incentive program to reward uh, new housing providers to participate with us, as well as uh, provide some funds to our providers to help mitigate some of the normal risk associated with uh, rental housing. And here lists the three incentive pro, uh, plans that we have or bonuses. Uh, the first one is geared toward new housing providers where the new housing provider will receive a one-time $250 uh, bonus reward upon leasing up with a family, as well as we offer a continuity bonus where our agency will pay up to 14 days vacancy rate uh, as a courtesy to our existing housing providers for leasing up with a new family within 60 days of the prior family moving out. Uh, as well, we offer a risk mitigation bonus where our agency will pay up to $1,000 in repair costs um, in the instances of an eviction or an unauthorized move. And also with that too, we encourage that in order for us to issue the $1,000, that also the security deposit has been applied as well to those expenses. Thank you, Kia. Mm -hmm. So now that you've heard a lot about the Housing Choice Voucher Program, I wanna go over additional benefits that a partnership with Enlivian um, provides. One of them being, um, half payments that are direct deposit to your account each month. Um, with the Housing Choice Voucher Program, the tenant rent is also income-based. This means that there is less risk of default. If a family has a change in income or financial hardship, their rent portion can be adjusted and the half portion increase to ensure that the housing provider receives the full contract rent. Additionally, being a partner with Enlivian, you can request annual rent increases for your units.
Other ben benefits of partnering with Olivian include our landlord portal. Our housing providers can access information um, such as payment history, inspection details, and family information from our landlord portal. Also, too, um, to add to what Tamika just stated, we do have a housing provider advisory committee uh, that's made up of housing providers that have partnered with Enlivian for a long period of time. We meet with the committee periodically to discuss uh, our processes and how we administer the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Uh, during this time, we get feedback and share knowledge on the best way to efficiently continue to improve our process to better serve our housing provider community. Okay, additional uh, partnership benefits include uh, free advertisement. We utilize Go Section 8 and socialserve.com um, for our housing providers to advertise to families that are currently searching for units to lease um, with their voucher assistance. There is also a supply of renters with Housing Choice Vouchers. We currently have over 250 new admission vouchers on the street of families searching for affordable housing. And as stated before, our families are incentivized to follow program rules. One of those program rules include being in compliance with their lease. So our families um, have to maintain compliance with their lease in order to continue to receive their voucher assistance. And last but not least, one of the benefits of partnering with Enlivian is the, pers the personal satisfaction that our housing providers receive from assisting low-income families in our community. At this time, we would like to take any questions um, that our audience has regarding the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Okay, what is the process for requesting annual rent increases? That is a great question. Um, we do have a form um, that housing providers can complete. Um, the rental increase is required to be submitted at least 60 days prior to the effective date of the increase. Um, those increases can be submitted to our rental increase email box uh, where they are processed. And also, Tamika, to add to that question, uh, if you are currently a housing provider with us and you're not able to obtain that rental increase form that is currently located in the landlord portal, uh, please contact me. My information will be listed at the end of our session. I'll be happy to locate your registration code and provide you with information to access the landlord portal where that form is housed. Thank you, Kia. Can you explain again the good neighbor training? Yes. So good neighbor training is part of our voucher briefing. Um, HUD requires that families receive a voucher briefing that explains information on how to utilize their voucher, um, their payment standard amounts, et cetera. However, Enlivian has incorporated additional information into our voucher briefing that we have termed good neighbor training. Part of the good neighbor training, we go over with families information on conflict resolution, um, tips on how to be a good resident um, and to help them acclimate into the community. Some of those tips include, for example, on trash day, um, roll out your bins the night before. You can't leave your trash cans outside for several days. They have to be put out on um, the night before trash pickup. Uh, we also give them tips on how to search for a unit, so what to look for in a neighborhood so that um, families can look for better high opportunity neighborhoods, as well as tips on what to look for in their lease and how to communicate with their housing provider.
Do we have any additional questions? There is one question that's being um, typed in right now. We could just okay. hold, no hold one second. I see a question, Tamika. Yes. It says, I have an HCV tenant and her grandchild has moved in with her. Why isn't she able to include her grandchild until it is time? Um, actually, um, families can report household composition changes at any time. Um, they would just need to provide the documentation. To add someone to a household is usually by adoption court awarded custody or birth. So the grandmother would need to provide information that she currently has um, custody of the minor so that they could be added to their voucher assistance. All right, we have another question. How does a person receive project-based voucher assistance for an affordable housing project that has extremely low rents? <clears throat> okay, so project-based voucher assistance is competitively award. We are currently partnering with um, the city of Charlotte um, to award PBV vouchers to developments that receive housing trust fund or list dollars. That way that the funds can be um, better utilized um, to focus on um, multiple streams of income or um, subsidy in a project. Um, and we use that as a the competitive process. So, and Livian doesn't currently have an RFP out for project-based vouchers, but um, some people that apply for housing trust funds or list funds may be also selected to receive project-based voucher assistance. How can I join the Housing Provider Advisory Committee? Okay, I'll let Kia answer that question. Well, thank you for your interest. Um, we currently, our housing uh, advisory committee members are appointed uh, by uh, our senior staff. Um, again, we, we will welcome new um, persons in the near future, but at this point, um, basically, if you could send me your information, I can tell you a little bit more about it. But again, they are appointed. And um, we would have to, of course, ask questions and, and talk with you. But uh, again, uh, we would be open to new members real soon. Can you tell me what a QC inspection means? It stands okay. for quality control. Oh. Go ahead, Tamika. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yes, it does stand for quality control. Um, one of the indicators that HUD looks for as far as efficient management of a housing choice voucher program is quality control inspections. These, con these inspections are conducted by senior management, so the inspection manager or the inspection lead. And what they do is they go after one of the housing inspectors to view a unit to ensure that all of our inspectors are inspecting units um, up to the same standards. Next, how does Olivia prepare owners to be successful for future inspection? That is a great question. Um, we do have a, a pre-inspection checklist um, but we also have a segment today on Inspections 101 where our inspections department will provide our housing providers with tips on how to pass, um, successfully pass an inspection. Uh, we also offer housing provider briefings where we provide information to landlords, which includes that inspection checklist. And to add to the briefing, as Tamika said, I conduct briefing, uh, housing provider briefings with new landlords. And that is an area that we discuss as far as the uh, checklist, as well as most common failed items uh, across the board for all uh, units. 
So I go more in detail with that as well during the brief. Why is it that more property managers don't accept the housing choice voucher or VASH voucher? Um, that's a great question. I think a lot of it has to do with myths surrounding the housing choice voucher program. Um, that's why we are having our symposium today to kind of help dispel some of those myths and tell our housing providers about some of the efficiencies that we have implemented in the program so that they can use housing choice voucher assistance in their portfolio and continue to receive um, profits, as Mr. Lindsay stated in the keynote address. What is the process for requesting annual rent increases? Um, I think we um, had that question already, but we do have a form um, that Kia um, indicated that is available through our landlord portal that family that our housing providers can complete. And they submit that form to our um, rental increase mailbox for processing. And lastly, do you have information sessions for owners interested in putting units on the program and how often? Yes, um, we do have a housing provider briefing. Uh, prior to COVID, those were scheduled monthly sessions in the office. Um, since we have been working remotely, Kia is doing housing provider briefings one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but now that we have additional virtual platforms, we do intend to go back to group sessions uh, virtually. And to add to what Tamika said, hopefully uh, next month, uh, I will be having a virtual housing prov provider prov briefing uh, the third Friday of every month where I will be able to speak with multiple uh, prospective housing providers or even existing housing providers who may still want to get a thorough detail on the process, um, please reach out to me and we can formulate a schedule or I can meet with you one-on-one -on -one as well. Okay, we've received a new question. How does a landlord become part of the portal? In order for the landlord to be, be able to have access to the landlord portal, they first have to start the lease up process with one of our families. Uh, and just to, to make sure you understand, uh, the, if they make uh, contact with the family, they would have to complete uh, the paperwork to start the lease up process with the family. Upon our agency receiving that information, uh, one part of the lease up process is the landlord registration piece. And once the landlord is registered with our organization, then the landlord would get a registration key code and uh, steps to access the landlord portal. So basically, you can't access the landlord portal until you are our, you're registered with our uh, organization. Okay, thank you. This concludes our Q&A session for this moment. Okay. Thanks, everyone. And we would also like to share um, contact information for the Housing Choice Voucher staff. If you had any um, inspections related questions, project based voucher um, manager questions, as well as um, the information is listed for Kia Coffin's um, housing provider outreach specialist and our admissions and portability manager, Camilla Booker.